What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon again, and, uh, you know, what do you do? What is it like this? Yes, thank you, thank you, not, not thank you and all that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How's everybody doing? Uh, oh, it's a wonderful day today, uh, as always. Um, man, today's episode, well, I've never heard of this one, man. This, this is a new one for me, so, uh, bear with me while I, uh, Familiarize myself, uh, if that's what they would call. I don't know, but um, welcome to No Avail, the mystery podcast. Oh, man, I'm your host, Joey to No Avail Shaddy, and my producer. Give it up for that's right, my friends. Linking, where you at? What's up, everybody? What's going on, my friends? Welcome to Noah Bell's Mystery Podcast. That's right. Oh, man, that's right. Well, we got a great show for everybody today. Yep, that's right. Well, yeah, I'm here, Muv. Oh, I'm still clean on the no cussing. That's right. That's right. Like, like that, what are we going on? What, what is this? What, I think, like two days? Go! Yeah! Come on, man, it's been like... Three or four days. Oh, man, I thought, I thought I was doing good. What's wrong with everybody? What's wrong with everybody? Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Dad, I know. No, no, no. I've never heard of um the Mantis. Man, this is a this is a new one for me, man. Uh, I'm going to have to let you do this because I'm, 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 I'm speechless. So why don't you tell us what the hell uh, Mantis Man is. You guys. Thank you for today's show. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. Thank you. Let's go, boy, you guys. I am Mantis Man. <laughs> Joey, Joey, come here. Wait, where are you? Hey. Hey, you can't leave me like this. You can't leave me like this. Oh, Joey, where'd you go, man? Where did you go, my friend? Oh. Hey, 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 I'm sorry. What's up, everybody? No. No, Linky. Uh, no, uh, Shaman. I have never heard of this one. Um, now, okay. I've heard of... I, I've never heard of Mantis Man. Actually, you know what? Before I get into, like, other things that I think maybe have been similar to, before we get into that, um, welcome to Noah Vale's Mystery Podcast, where I talk about, man, the mysteries of the world. Uh, but, I, I okay, I really am getting into the cryptid thing because... Cryptids are fascinating to me because I'm, I'm 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 starting to really honestly really begin that we I think that our own minds are starting to yeah you know what I'm saying um, bring out because the more that somebody talks about it, the more you know what though I you know I I was just okay um, before I lose the few that do listen to this show. <laughs> I'm just kidding, everybody. I appreciate everybody for joining. Forget for listening to my podcast. Um, I have a blast. Like, I love doing this. Um, I just hope everybody enjoys listening to it. I would like to say, everybody, please check out HTTPS. Backlash, backlash. In a mystery podcast. Dot podbean. Dot com. Well, you know, I do it slow purposely like that because it really is, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you hit... What, hard to do? Like, hard to sit there and type it out? It is, you know. Uh, I know you've been working on trying to get a different, uh, you know, uh, its own domain. And we're getting there, Dad. We're getting there. That's how, you know, hey, you're doing great, man. Thanks, Lincoln. I, you know, what would I do without you, man? Not have this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, I, hey, 
That's why I need you here, my man. That's why I need you here. Yep. Just fall asleep at the mic. That's my man. Um, let's get into this today. Okay, man. Mantis. Man. Okay, this one is a... Like I said, I, this is one I know ever. Okay. Mantis Man is roughly seven foot tall, bug-like creature that has been reported in Hackettstown, New Jersey, near the Muskenetkong Muskenetkong River. Anyone is uh, familiar with that? Please get back with me. Uh, this cryptid mostly resembles a praying mantis, which is why it's called... <laughs> oh. Manus man! Oh, oh, I wouldn't. I would oh, I didn't know that. I wouldn't have known. I'm just, well, I was wondering why it was called Mantis Man. I, I mean, just kidding. Uh, and it's unlikely to be related to Manta Mantodia order. Mantodia order. I, I don't know what that is, but uh, we will get there. We will. A lot of people might ask too. What the? What in the God's name does the mantis? Well, the odd thing about the two sightings that were present is the fact that both men were out fishing and saw it near a body of water, which maybe they need ran out of. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, you always need more stuff to fish with, and perhaps. The Mantis Man would be a good... Well, you know what? That's not a joke. Stop it. Thank you. See? There have been two sightings of this. Okay. Like I said, too. I, I joke like it's whatever, but I'm not making fun. It's, I'm, I'm just... Well, why not make life humorous? You know what I'm saying. I Now, I got to say this. If I saw anything that looked like a... Praying mantis or other insect that was a humanoid type of a, you know, get going on thing going. I would, uh, I don't think running is the correct uh, description for, uh, yeah, that's, thank you, Lincoln. You know what, Lincoln? Go to your mom, man, because that's all I had to, you know. Hey, man, hey, <laughs> don't get on with me. I would so, ooh, <laughs> that looks pretty good. Okay, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? Oh, you're such a dick nose. So. Yeah, that's right. I did. I said a dick nose. You, know you know what that is? I don't. I don't know what a dick knot is, but I'm going to take a guess that I think I might know. It's you, okay? That's a dick mod. So, praying mantis, they don't usually spend their times around water, which is why these two sightings, um, both sightings at this, um, they were around, they were out fishing and saw it near bodies of water. Praying mantises don't go around water. They're on leaves eating in the woods. You know, they usually spend their time on leaves in the forest. Though, mantis may be able to swim in shallow water. With its huge size, it can touch the bottom of the river without its whole body drifting away through the current. But you didn't think of that one, did you, Link? No, oh, bet not. Um, in all of the reports, the mantis man doesn't harm anyone. It's likely afraid of the people who encounter it because it seems to always run away when they get close to it. Now, I say that <laughs> always because, you know, the two witnesses, well, it ran away both times. No, really, it did. That's what they, yeah, I'm not kidding. Yep. Both times it ran away. Oh, oh I'm not joking. The sightings were unlike, well, the two on Monsters and Mysteries in uh, America, which if you've seen that, that it kind of goes with it. Um, there was, in fact, another sighting of the Mandis Man. The police report tells, the oh, police report, tells that another person, Mr. Strickler, I think that's a real name. We're just going to go with it was. Uh, saw the Menace Man, oh, sorry, Menace, 
Venice Man, like <laughs> the Mantis Man in a riverbank. Here's his story, and I quote: "Don't do that. I'm not. It wasn't a joke. I was. Yes. Unlike the two on Monsters, oops, I saw something strange a few weeks ago on the M Kong River near my home here in Hack." Hackettstown, New Jersey. I was driving near my home from the drugstore on Newburgh Road. As I drove near the bridge over the river, I noticed to my left something. I thought a fisherman standing in the river just off the south bank. I slowed the car and looked closer. It wasn't a person, and it was transparent, like with a weird shape. It moved slowly towards the bank and into the trees. I drove further so I could see it coming out of the trees. That's the last I ever saw of it. Don't do that, Lincoln. It was eight foot tall or so, and it had long, thin arms hanging off of it. There's something with long, thin arms. Do you know what I'm saying? That anything with long, thin arms is creepy. Uh, you know, like... If you uh, you're always looking like I am, you know. Well, I, hey, you got research stuff for you know, and that's all I do. Is and no, besides my. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I wish I wish I left the mic on for that for you. But uh, those like on YouTube, all those videos with like the long creepy arms. You know what I'm saying? Like there is something about those. Those cryptids that just don't do it. Andrew, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, sorry, I just looked at my thing. Uh, my, 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 my thing. Uh, how you doing, Andrew? Um, now, there's something with arm in the middle of your thing. Okay. There's something about, uh, Andrew, I'll get right back with you. Uh, I will, because actually I want to, I want to yell at you for a minute. Uh, not yell at you, but you know, say what's up. Uh. There's something about a long-armed anything that that's a, it is. It's like creepy and <laughs> hey, that's not it, like your arm. <laughs> you're, you're in this. No, my people say say that I have long arms. I'm a drummer, so I, I don't know. And I they probably are longer than they should be. But and sure, yeah, I like my arms. Real creepy. Yeah. Um. So it was eight foot tall, had long thin arms, can't talk, thin arms hanging off of it. The color was a pale brown, but I could see through it. The head was small compared to the body. It was sunny that day, so I thought it may have been the glare from the water. But after I thought back, I realized I wasn't seeing a mirage or glare. I checked the internet and didn't see anything about it. I mentioned it to a coworker in my office at lunch on Wednesday. He gave me the strangest look. I thought, uh oh, he thinks I'm nuts. Well, I mean, you know what though? I've, you know, when I say that I've seen people look at me like that, we weren't back. To, uh, we went back to his computer and we and we brought it up the Hackettstown forum with the Manus Man witness. And what did it say? Well. The explanations that were on the internet. People claim that the Manus Man may have been an experiment gone wrong, and someone who couldn't control it just set it free near a river. Wow. Well, that was a better guess than I would have said. Uh, it could have, it could have been a mutation in a breeding situation. Okay. I've always said maybe things like they are like a. You know, a biological thing gone wrong, creation by you know, alien, whatever. I mean, listen, just because I lie, that, that, I'm not saying that's not make. I don't make, but it's like, dude, when you see an eight foot tall praying mantis, there is something going on in the universe. That's I don't know if it's clicking right or it's not clicking right, but now I believe these people. I do. I don't because I've seen some. Sh I do, and everybody laughs at me about it, but. Are they? But no, it's man. It was like when I saw I saw was sitting in. A, we have a cabin in um, Arkansas, and, we, and actually it was me and my brother and somebody else. And we were sitting outside by the fire. We have a fire pit out the front, and we were sitting there. 
and I'm not kidding. Like, I shit you not. If I'm, I'm trying not to cuss on here, but uh, I just did. Sorry, apologize. Um, I'll do that again though. Um, we saw this live. I mean, like, it, it was like we heard this noise and we look and this thing whizzed by and another thing whizzed by. I mean, I like this. When I say whizz by, I'm not. I guess it wouldn't be like this be like because we saw it, but it was hauling ass. And it wasn't more than like five seconds later, ten seconds. And I mean, count ten because it takes a minute. Like one, two, three, four. Okay, maybe it was five seconds. These like three or four uh, fighter jets came hauling ass and they were chasing these things. So obviously it was, we saw something. Um, and see, I say that to people, and they're like, oh, maybe it was just... No, it was exactly what we saw. Just like this person saw what he thought was a praying mantis. I mean, it's... Listen, people, don't knock people because of their... Because of what they... It's not their fault they see it. They're just talking about it. doesn't mean that they're crazy. That It's... You just... You, and you know what do they say? Don't kill the messenger. But don't knock people, man. Because you... You just you shouldn't do that. Anyway, it's wrong to judge from seriously. But anyway, um, and I'm dead serious about that. Uh, so an experiment gone wrong, or someone who couldn't control it just set it free near a river. I, I, the statement is funny. I'm not saying, but it is. <laughs> just nonchalant. Oh, well, it's probably just something to let it go by the river. Okay. It could have been a mutation in a breeding situation, unlike it being short, or it would have been massive. Some people speculate that there are more than just one of these mantis roaming around. Oh, shit. I hate bugs. I hate insects. Like, they freak me out. And if there was an eight-foot one, I'd be uh, Talk about... See, that's where nightmare word comes into play for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think you should have done that, but... Well, some people speculate that there are more than one. The reason why most people think it's a giant mantis, oh, here it goes, instead of being something else, is because it looks and does things like a mantis, camouflage, spreading its wings, the mouth, etc. Those would be pretty good. Um, speculating, yep, details. Now, while most people think it might just be a large praying mantis, other people suggest that it might be an alien. Ooh, that was my that was my next. Possibly, some aliens may look like insects in some way. Now, this is where I was going with this. I personally have never seen the the, the praying mantis looking aliens, but I've read a lot, a whole lot. That I hate when I do that. I hate it when I do that. I. I hate when I do that. I hate that. I'm not doing it anymore. I apologize. Um. Oh, dude. I do. I don't. I hate it. Um. You were, you, you've heard stories about people that say that, that there's a and there's a name for him, like the praying mantis alien. And it's and they say he's the nicest alien too. Uh, this is what everybody says this season. If, Man, if I ever saw anything, I don't care how nice it was, a praying man. This, yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't make that noise when I'm talking about a insect. <laughs> God, thank you, Lincoln. Well, I'm just saying. Now, while most people think it might be a just a large praying man, as other people suggest it might be an alien. And that now, listen. The reason I read that twice is because. Every, every, uh, I've heard you hear those stories about people that see this spring man. It's, it's an alien, um, it's a kind of alien. Like, I guess that's what their whole planet looks like. Yes, I'm not kidding. Um, it's impossible for the current atmosphere to, to sustain a praying mantis this large. So it's likely that the mantis is an aquatic creature resembling a praying mantis. That's why it's by water. Like all things, however, there is, an, a re, there is a reasonably high chance that this is a hoax. Well, 
Luckily, I read that first before I went on the story about it. Uh, maybe. But you know what, man? Until I, I, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I, uh, I, what am I trying to say without, you know, um, and people are, that's their, but people are, well, it was probably a hoax. But, man, and you know what, though, I gotta say, if that was, like, I was watching this thing the other day, and this guy's got this video of, uh, oh, he's got a video of, uh, of a, of a, of a Bigfoot. No, no, it wasn't. It was, it was Dogman. That's what it was. And he had this, and this guy, and this thing. I don't know what it was. But it, it looked, I, and I apologize if it's really Dogman. It did look like one of those masks that you put on from a comics, not a comic store, but a, you know, Halloween store. It looked just like it. Now, that goes back to exactly what I was just, if, and it's, I think, I won't put it past anything, that it seems to be that, man, we can almost take these things into existence. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sorry. Well, no. Say whatever you want, dude. The more and more time goes by, the more and more things, and it could be the certain thing, you know, they, I hate it when I say they say, because who is they anyway, man? You know who they is. They're the ambiguous theys. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I'm talking about when I say they say. Uh, now it looks just like a praying manus. This, yeah. Mhm. Oh. Yeah. If I saw this thing. Man, I hate I Dude, insects freak me out. So I would just it'd be the, you know, maybe that's what I need to run into. This heart attack instant. Uh, ooh, wait. Okay. Uh, Andrew, how you doing, man? Sorry, I thought you'd get back to you just for a second. Say what's up, man. You doing all right, man? How you been doing? Um, and I, I always love looking down to seeing, seeing you on there, man. How you been doing? What's been going on? Uh, oh, did you ever send that picture? I don't know if you sent it or not, or uh, emailed it if you had a chance to do it yet. Um, I didn't get it, but uh, if you, uh, but I need, I'll go back and check my emails again though. Um, uh, and if you didn't, if you didn't have, if you haven't had time, I totally, totally understand. But I can't wait to see that picture that you have. That's, I think was it Andrew? Yeah, was it? I think. It was the, you had the picture of the baby Bigfoot. I can't wait to see that. Now see, that's, I, I am a hundred percent. Did it, that I know the Bigfoot is, there's just too many stories. You know what I'm saying? Like people, I, uh, did you hear about that lady that said that she was like, a Bigfoot still took her and like, fell in love with her yeah had a relationship with this lady i'm not that's i need to look that that one up not kidding you man and see i've had my bigfoot instances i've never turned around and been like oh my fucking god there's a bigfoot standing right in front of me i've never had that but i've had like the um occurrences where you the really bad smell the odor and like um the 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 the, the things that that would uh relate to it being around you know what i'm saying um but i've never been like ran into it you know what i mean um yes there is a lady that said that she was kidnapped that's what it was kidnapped by a bigfoot and it like fell in Love with it. Yeah, I did. And like, uh, I think she said they humped. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know. Bigfoot got lucky. Well, one of them. I, no, I need to. I'll look that story up. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like, that is the kind of stuff I'm telling you. And and I, anybody that says that anybody is like uh, whatever for judgment all about that, I can tell you where to stick it. But I'm not going to because if I do, then the people that are going to stick it won't listen to this anymore. And well, I don't know if I have that many fans, but I got to keep the ones I got. I just did that again. I hate it when I do that. I don't know why. Okay. Lincoln just fell asleep. But then the time he was just... Just sleep. All right. Let's think of it. I, this, I, this is what the producer of the show is doing right now. Let me, let me get this for you, everybody. Well, okay. Here we go. This is, this is what the producer of the show is doing. Man, I didn't have his job. Um, he's just up yelling and, and hollering and calling me names. Now look what he's doing. Here, wait. I'm going to post this. This is what the producer of the show is doing as we speak. I just, yep. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. He's out. Well, Lincoln, we love you, man. Um, so, oh, so I got, I'm starting, I'm going to start doing this show. Now, I'm going to do full live shows, but actually, you know what? Nothing. I'll do, I'll talk about it later. Um, yeah, that's the producer of the show right there. He's out. Oh, nope, nope, never mind. We just changed, uh. Which, hey, this is what happens when you are top, this is what happens when you are top dog of a podcast show, yep, this is what you can do and what you can't do is what I am doing, talking, this is what you get to do, that's the picture, yep, he got, he reminds me of Snoopy, <laughs> yeah, I hit that button because you are asleep. Yep. Anyway. Uh, I-X-U-I-Y-D-Z-J. What's up, man? How are you? Well, how are you doing? Thank you for joining. I always love it when I see people join um, my live stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to pre-record some of these. Uh, well... I gotta figure out what subscribers we get that just wouldn't. You know what I mean? Uh, well, if I left it up to the producer, we would, <laughs> wouldn't get anything done. What? Go for a I was just taking. I was just resting my eyes. Jesus, man. Sorry. God. It's okay. Go rest your eyes again. All right. Well, so I'm sorry for the, uh, you know. Now, ooh, have you guys ever heard of galactic creatures? Has anybody else heard of those? Uh, yeah. Uh, The Manus Man was an insectoid cryptid reportedly, yeah, eight feet tall. I know. Yeah. Uh, an undiscovered species, an extra testicle. Don't say that, an extraterrestrial. That's what, and I don't like them. It's not funny. Um, now, okay, here's another thing about it. Now, the creature was described as standing about seven feet high. Uh, having mandible, uh, large, intense, very black eyes. One observer described the creature as fading as it moved up the riverbank where it was spotted, leading to speculation that perhaps the beast was using camouflage and blending it to its surroundings. 
The second observer reported hearing a humming and feeling tingling sensations and seeing the mantis man spread its wings. Oh, shit. When observed by him in a threatening gesture. Oh, well, it didn't say that before. It also eventually vanished as if it were in, into a fog. Yeah. So, oh, uh, well, yeah. That's, no, now, the man is, no, I'm just, hey, I'm just reporting. This is on Tumblr. The Manus Man is a large humanoid praying man is found in New Jersey. The Manus Man is said to be a humanoid praying is the same thing. Dark green or brown in color and and is also trans, translucent. The Manus Man has been seen standing in ponds trying to catch fish, which is odd since praying mantises normally don't like water. Well, this thing's eight feet tall, though. I mean, I mean... I'm sure it's going to have some big body of water to drink. Whenever someone gets too... I don't think they have cups. They might. I don't know. Whenever someone gets too close to the man, this man runs off, showing that it's scared of people. Some people believe that the man, this man could be an escaped experiment or an alien. Now, haven't you guys ever heard of the alien species that people see that it's it's really not a... Uh, it's a... Uh, Hey, what's up, Re- 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 Revelac? What's going on? Thank you for joining. Um, oh. uh, I, man, I always always look down to see people on, uh, joining. It is at the bottom of the hour. I've got to take a short break, but I will not leave you bored. I'll be right back. It's not going to take me very long, but I will leave you with a, a good story. Um... I'm not gonna. This is. I'm not gonna take a long break. So I will be right back. Um. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have a. It's probably be a long. We're, I'm just hanging out, having having fun today. So probably be hanging out for a while. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. And here's an awesome story for you guys. I'll be right. This is like. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Last year at the beginning of summer, I visited my Nana's farm with my mom for just a weekend. Her farm is located in a very rural and secluded area, right at the foot of a mountain in a rural area of South Carolina. The roads in my area are poorly maintained and barely wide enough for two cars to pass by each other. The houses are spread out and pretty far back into the tree line from the road, so there is very little ambient light besides a car's headlights in the distance. So, my mom and I were driving along, her in the driver's seat and me in the passenger. It was around 11 p.m. and we were about 15 minutes away from Nana's, deep in the woods with the radio down, almost silent. We come onto this straight stretch of road in a heavily wooded area, and suddenly, this blur of a creature darts out across the road, right at the edge of our headlights. It was moving incredibly fast, but my mom and I got a really good look at it, and both of us agreed at what we saw. It was a reasonably large creature, roughly the size of a person maybe just a bit bigger. Neither of us could make out the shape of the head but we both remember it appearing to have a segmented body, as if it were emaciated and its ribcage were poking out. The reflection of a light made it hard for me to tell the color, but my mom said she remembered it to be dark, and she didn't see any fur or hair. It had long, gangly limbs as it moved across the road. It didn't run the way a dog or a horse would with all four legs, The best word to describe it would be that it was loping, using its front limbs to pull itself along and moving considerably fast. We both said something along the lines of, what the heck is that, as it crossed in front of us. As we got up to where it had crossed, I turned to look at it, and as we reached the other side of the road, where it was just out of our headlights, I looked, and I swear on my life, it stood up, and it ran. 
not like a dog, but like a person, as if it were bipedal. I immediately yelled that it had stood up, and we both started getting nervous. I honestly would have thought that I was going insane had another person in the car not seen it with me. My mom has always been a pretty level-headed person, and not superstitious in any circumstance, but she was incredibly nervous and was pretty scared about this, and we had to agree not to tell Nana about this to avoid scaring her. I recently came across an article about a woman who was hunting and claimed to have seen an invisible or cloaked creature that she likened to the predator from the movie of the same name. I read her story and saw the picture she took of the supposed predator. Regarding the picture, I believe it may be a result of a sun flare and a close-up of her face. However, I am not dismissing her story. In fact, I'm quite doing the opposite, as I also have had a similar encounter that led me to seek out if anybody else has experienced this predator-type creature in the woods. Now, on to my encounter. When I was around five years old, I used to play near the woods behind my grandmother's house. I played there frequently, and my grandmother would keep an eye on me from the kitchen or living room, as the house had large windows facing the woods. Every now and then, she would come out and check on what I was doing. I was really into digging in the dirt and collecting unusual rocks and arrowheads scattered around the area where my grandmother lived. This is Midwest Illinois, not far from Cahokia Mounds, so finding arrowheads was not super uncommon. Anyway, that day I remember picking out a spot to dig. I've been out there for quite some time because I remember I had a decent sized hole going when something caught my eye in the tree I was next to. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but it looked like a heat ray coming off the branch. It was fall. I remember this because I had my pink jacket on, and I remember thinking that my mom was going to be pissed that I had dirt around the bottom of my arms from digging. I also remember there being a lot of leaves on the ground. Anyway, I am staring at this quote-unquote heat wave and realizing it was somewhat of a human shape. So here I am, five years old, and wondering why an invisible man is in the tree. I remember feeling scared but of unsure what to do. Then it started moving and making a faint clicking sound. That is when I decided I was not supposed to see this and hightailed it back to the house. My grandmother saw I was pretty shaken, and I remember telling her I had just seen an angel. In my five-year-old mind, I didn't know what else it could be. I had never seen aliens, heard of ghosts, or monsters at this point. So it really had to be an angel, because that's all my little mind could think of. Fast forward to when I'm about 12 years old or so. By this time, the encounter was way out of my mind. I loved watching action and sci-fi movies. My dad rented a movie called Predator. I'm watching it with him, and the first time you see the Predator invisible slash cloaked, I about crapped myself. All the memories from that day, digging in the dirt, came flooding back. I even asked my dad if the Predator was real or not, and if anybody had known any animal that could do something like that. He wasn't really sure, but he told me the Predator thing was definitely fake. It wasn't like today where we could just Google it and figure it all out, you know? I had no access to the internet. So again, I just put it out of my mind. Fast forward to about the year of 2004. I'm grown, have three small children, and just went through a separation from my husband. I moved to the next town over to an apartment with my kids. These apartments are all one-level duplexes and five buildings. I am at the very last apartment in the previous building. The apartments are considered in town, but they're more on the outskirts. A deep ditch runs behind the buildings, a chain link fence separates them from this massive set of woods. There's about six or seven trees on the side of our wall. If you follow the ditch a little bit, you'll hit this small forest that eventually leads to a country road with a bunch of like extensive farmland and a bunch more like forest and whatnot. I am a smoker, but I would not smoke in the apartment because of the kids, so I often went out onto the back porch. 
One night, I was up late doing laundry and stuff after the kids went to bed. I decided to go outside and take a smoke break before I went to sleep. I am back on the porch and started hearing this faint clicking sound. I immediately looked to the ditch because I had seen a groundhog there a few days before and thought perhaps it was there again. The backyard is dimly illuminated by the nearby playground light to the right of the back porch. I only turned on my porch light when I went out for a quick smoke. I didn't see a groundhog or any movement from the ditch, so I went back to smoking my cigarette. The faint clicking sound kept happening, and a slight movement made me look up into the tree to the left of my porch. Something was there. I didn't see a groundhog or anything like that. But, what I did see was vaguely in the shape of a humanoid. It had to have been the same thing that I saw when I was five. It gave off that same distortion. It was crouched down on the branch with one arm out, holding on to the tree trunk. I couldn't believe it. I is this really happening is all I could think to myself. Has it come to kill me from seeing it all those years ago? All I could think was about my kids and everybody sleeping in the apartment. I ran inside and slammed the door, locking it immediately. I ran to my kids' rooms and closed all their windows and locked those as well. Then I turned off all the lights in the living room and stared out the blinds at the tree to see if I could catch another glimpse of it. I sat there for what had to be about ten minutes, maybe even more, and I never saw another thing. I began to think, maybe I was just tired. Maybe I was just hallucinating it. And just as I was finally talking myself down, my neighbor's dog came running across the yard and started barking at the tree at the same branch where I had seen this predator thing. That freaked me out even more, because that dog was not a barker, and now it kind of reassured what I had just seen. I didn't sleep a wink that night. I have never seen anything like it again, and I don't know if I ever want to. Does anybody listening to this have any idea what it could be? I had a really strange experience last winter at Conga. Next Monday is going to be an awesome day. I've got two people coming on doing yeah, doing doing a show. I don't know if I'm going to do live or if uh, I'm starting to do like every Monday. Uh, there's going to be people that are coming on. Um, there's going to be two people. I might make it out of it. I might make a two show uh, thing out of it, actually. Uh, they've got the best. I mean, they lived in this haunted hut, and they live way out, too. Uh, man, they've got the craziest stories of this house they lived in that was haunted. And it's really, really screwed up because um, they're actually the, – the, the, one of the only instances that I really had a big – was over, was was was, was uh, out there, and uh, – me and Lee and Lincoln are packing up our stuff and driving way out. Uh, what, two? Um, and they've got really, 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 really crazy stories. This is going to be a great show. I'm going to hype this one up next Monday. I'm uh, Actually, I think I'm going to do like a live thing, and then I'll have like the recorded thing of it. So it'll be like selling the thing and then, you know. And then the, the delivery. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, man. I'm trying to figure out podcast episodes. It's a... 
Man, so awesome. Okay. Like I was saying, years gone past before. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, I just want to. Um, what was that? Oh. Um. Uh, all right, man. Now I am going to. Not really, actually. Man, I love when I'm so organized. I tell you what, nobody's as organized as I am, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I, I hope everybody can hear me. Non-sarcasm in my voice. Ah, man, okay. Did, is anybody ever interested in the, uh, the cryptids that, like, that are like the, the um, Oh, uh, uh, like the big birds. You know what I'm talking about? The, um, the where the where the big, you know, uh, like a, big birds that fly around. I mean, like big enough to carry off a human being. You know what I'm saying? I those I don't know why. Those aren't really in my uh, interest, spark of interest. But this show is not just for my interest. Uh, I got it. And if anybody else is. Uh, I would love to do one of those shows for you guys. Um, I don't know why the, 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 big, the big bird thing is like, I don't know. Now, if you tell me that a pterodactyl has been flying over your house, I'm going to tell you this now. Uh, I'm there, dude. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just saying. Yes, I do. I have a big pterodactyl tattoo on my shoulder like uh, yeah. It's, you know, yeah. Anyway, I'm kind of into the mis the weird cryptids that are, uh, now don't get me wrong. No, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't, no, I love, no, the gigantic birds. Yes, I do. They're interesting. They interest. Yes, they, I, I'm interested in them. Okay, God damn, I shouldn't have said anything. Jesus, sorry. Damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't say anything too loud. Um, I don't know why they just. They, all right, I hope that everybody can hear me after the people trying to. God, I'm still popping. I bet it doesn't even work because of this. Anyway. It should because I. Maybe. I hope. Can everybody hear me on here? Or. You know what I could do? I could do this. I'll do it just in case. Here we go. See, I knew it still works. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done that. So, anyway, that's fine. I need to re technique this. Anyway, because. Just, just because. He couldn't hear me for a minute, uh, but I went ahead and just rechecked the connection. Anyway, no, the bird thing does. But here's one that 
This this got my interest. What was that mysterious snouted animal? Now, man, that, well, it just leaves a wide open door of, like, what does that mean? Well, on June 7, 2013, a woman who lives in a heavily wooded area of Unity Township, a few miles east of Greensburg, saw a strange animal unlike anything she had ever seen before. She is looking for help and trying to identify what the creature was. It all began at about 11.30 a.m. that morning when she was talking, taking a walk, I'm sorry, around her property. Sorry. Uh, about 50 or 75 yards away, she noticed movement in some high weeds and saw an animal which she thought initially was a deer. The animal at that distance seemed to be a little larger than a fawn as the animal uh, excited the high weed she quickly realized that it was not a deer the face of the animal turned in her direction and looked someone like like a somewhat I'm sorry like a dog with big ears mm, wait a minute dog man the body of the animal was estimated to be about Two or two and a half feet long, with a tail about a foot long. The entire animal was the same color described as really dark brown and completely hairless. Ooh. Uh, the tail was long. Uh, long and skinny. Uh, the creature appeared to be very thin, and the hind legs of the animal appeared to be longer than, than the front legs. Now, uh, the back of the animal also appeared to be hunched up. The ears looked to be straight up and similar to a deer. The weirdest physical detail of the animal was a very prominent snout. The snout was described as appearing really long and really thick. It was not pointed at the end, but seemed to be blunted. Yes, Lincoln, like your nose. Oh, man, sorry. Sorry. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The witness was not able to identify the strange beast, and she decided to go into the house to grab her phone and use the camera function to take a picture. She was able to take a picture before the animal ran off and from a quite a distance away. Uh, an enlargement of the picture is used with this report and re reproduced with the permission of the witness. When the animal could no longer be seen, the, the woman decided to approach closer to that area, hoping to get a more detailed photograph. She moved about 25 yards ahead when she heard something growling and decided to turn back. That might be a good idea. A couple of seconds after the animal moved off into the woods, a deer came running from that area. The deer was sn uh, snorting and huffing and appeared as though it was frightened. A similar animal has reportedly been seen around that general area by other people over the last year. I have been receiving other reports of somewhat similar strange hairless creatures over the last two years from various uh, statewide locations. Now, the woman who did an, uh, an internet search mentioned that she, uh, what she saw looked similar to an animal identified as Tasmanian tiger. Even though she saw no stripes, it still looked very similar. She said that, sh that the blow-up of the photo of the animal that she took seemed to possibly show stripes. More recently, on June 29th of 2013, in a rural area of Green C County outside of Waynesburg, another odd hairless creature uh, with a dog-like face was reported. If you have seen anything similar or have some ideas as to uh, as the identity of the animal, please let us know as a witness would like to solve this mystery. Man, I've heard more and more stories about that dog man. Now, I'm going to say this. When I say this, I'm not talking about it. Instant. Instant. Um, there was... This, I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, it was like this, um, like a dog man. But 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 this, there was a video. But and it was very similar to like 
mass. But I, you know what, though, man. But I, if it wasn't, man, no, I wasn't there. I didn't take it, so I can't say. But if that was somebody out in the middle of nowhere with one of those masks, though, I got it very well planned. I'm just saying, very well planned. Um, I'm not saying that's what it was. I'm just saying it looked very uh, eccentrically, yes, like that. It sure as hell looked like a dog, man. That's for goddamn sure. Well, sorry. Now, strange hairless creature seen near Beaver Run Reservoir. It was about 6 a.m. on the morning of August 1st, 2012, when a motorist saw something that still has him baffled. The witness was driving down Route 380 about a half mile past the Beaver Run Reservoir when from the left a strange uh, animal came out of the woods about four to five car lengths in front of him. The man slowed down to look at the odd animal which was now on the road and was only about one car length away at this point. He was almost stopped as he continued to watch as the animal ran up a hill. When it got to the tree line, the creature, which was hairless except for the tail, and much bigger than a fox, looked back directly at him for about three seconds while it continued to run. The witness not well, uh, the witness got a good look at the at, this, at what he called its evil-looking face. The creature moved into the woods and was no longer seen. The man told me that his first thought after the encounter was, "What the hell was that?" as mine would be too. The man said that the creature ran in a fashion unlike any other animal he'd ever seen before. He described the strange animal as being about six feet long, including the tail. It was estimated to weigh between 70 to 80 pounds, and the body was hairless and grayish in color. The entire body looked to be wrinkly and muscular. The witness also noticed what appeared to be some dark splotches uh, about two, one, uh, well, yeah, around the shoulder and the leg area. The tail was bushy. It was about two, 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 two and a half feet long. It was a bit darker, grayish black color than the rest of the body was. I don't want to get any sentences with was, but the tail struck straight out. Stuck, I'm sorry. God, I messed horrible. The tail stuck straight out and had a curve toward the end of it, like a devil. The witness, uh, when asked to describe the face, stated to me, Oh, God, horrible, horrible. Like a creature from hell, evil, bad, horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's where I was going with it. He told me that the eyes were all dark and larger than that of a dog. The mouth was not open. The nose was short. Well, I mean, like it was pushed in short. But its ears were big, real big and pointy. Uh, what? Yeah, well, when it looked at, him, at the man, he told me it startled him. Which, I'm going to tell you, it startled the shoe to make you happy to be in your car at that point. I received the report on the incident on August 22nd of 2012 and interviewed the witness on August 23rd. It was obvious that the witness was still quite upset over the encounter he had with this strange creature. The creature is similar to the one reported near Sh- uh, Sharpsburg um, in Allegheny County on June 8, 2011. The one that I was just reading about. Yeah. Yes. No, but that's what I was saying. Well, it's similar to it. Um, Now, this dog man that that, that people speak of uh, is way prevalent more. Like, I'm hearing more and more stories from this dog man creature thing. Have you not heard of it? I have. Well, I have. (laughs) That guy doesn't. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, well, like, uh, I guess 
and it's yeah, it's coming out more and more that these uh, animals are like. Um, sorry, I'm reading this, talking to somebody. Uh, they seem to be more. Uh, hey, Andrew, are you still there? Uh, how have you been doing, man? Well, I hope you're still there. Um, Andrew is super, super cool, dude. I met him. Uh, what was it? I go a week or two, a couple, a couple weeks. I love everybody I meet on Podbean is super, super cool. Um, Podbean fam, family people are super awesome, and I love everybody on here. Um, I can never tell who stays on if anyone's still on here. Um, now this one. Man sees a UFO and possible Bigfoot within minutes. This is where I'm saying. This is like the story that I, I'm always reading about. I get emails that are like, yeah. about, And it's more and more that people are seeing UFOs around Bigfoot sighting or vice versa. And I, you know, there's, there's so much to them that I'm starting to really think. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I really do. One evening in July of 2001, a man had a strange experience while walking in a wooded area near Mineral Point in Cambria County. In the distance ahead of the fellow, he observed a tall creature covered in black or brown fur. The creature had its back toward the witness. The man saw the animal standing, standing up and walking at a slow pace on two legs. It seemed to be eating something. Later, he watched it drop down on all fours and gallop away. The animal looked to be about eight or nine feet tall when standing. The man kept his distance while he watched the creature for several minutes as it moved uh, deeper into the woods. Soon after seeing the creature, the man was finishing his uh, walk when he noticed something unusual in the sky. Hovering a few hundred feet away, above some trees, the witness observed a series of blue, non-blinking lights in a triangular f uh, configuration. The object, which made no noise, shot up into the clear sky and moved off in the distance. The witness wondered what the chances were of seeing a UFO and a strange creature within minutes of, uh, of each other. That's what I'm saying. Well, it, it, it is, uh, is it, uh, you know what I mean? Like, no. It is weird. Oh, no. No. Now, man, these are, these are, these are, these are fun. The alien things. While getting into that, mm -hmm. um, I I guess the like I'm so fascinated in in the uh, in the whole um, uh, the, because I love astronomy and I love like anything. The universe itself is way mysterious than uh, any uh, creatures that are roaming Earth. That's for damn. Um, uh, I really do. You know, there's a, uh, there's a, oh, what was that? There's a guy that, that, uh, he, it's, it's a whole, it's like this whole thing. I, I need to, yeah, I, I need to look it up. Like I always say. I need to look that up. Um. Is it that, that has this whole theory that it is speculated that it is more what I, I, I want to say this probably I want to say it right the chances of a brain just popping out of nowhere in some void out in the middle of uh, of space or the universe space whatever makes more sense than the way that the universe the, the way that scientists uh, say that the uh, universe um, came up the way that it was. Uh, in that, 
I mean, it's not. Well, don't do that. Oh yeah. Well, did you did you did you did you understand what I when I said that? Okay. It makes more sense. Now, when I read this, though, I was like, <laughs> "Who's it make more sense by?" <laughs> this is this is a speculation. So, wait a minute. That's that's purely. Well, but anyway, it is a real uh, thing that uh, apparently, as whatever the universe is, that it. A brain just popping out of existence of nothing in some void out in the universe space is is makes more sense or is more likely than the way that we have speculated that the universe came to, into existence, like the Big Bang and all this, you know. Yeah. I mean, according to I don't know what scientists, but that's what it's a whole story. It's a whole theory. Like I I need to. Uh, it's really interesting. I, well, it well it is, and this is why because the, the universe, the, the, the space. I mean, man, really, honestly, it seems to me. Seems to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's why I say I'm a drummer, I'm not a singer. Um I can't even play that directly. Um seems to be that even like the moon, the universe the way that the it all is, is that even scientists come up with these theories which are I, mean, I say like come up with like they like they're stupid or something, and they're not they're not they're, that's not what I meant. Let's make sure that everybody's clear there. Um, what are the odds that um, the tiny pin dot just exploded out of nothing when whatever it was and made the universe and that star and that's where we're well there we are and here we are today um apparently the odds of that are very uh low and yet here we are leave it at that i mean really it really is that's about it here we go now was this motorist wounded by an alien Boy, this one. <laughs> I, I wish my drum sounded that good. Ah, such an annoying noise. All right, everybody, this is a little bit of a story right here. So, sit down, grab your drink. It's gonna be a good one. Fayette County in Pennsylvania is one of the areas of our country that has a reputation for mysterious happenings that date back for many years. The incident that you are about to, to hear occurred in 1971 at a rural location in the general area where other strange encounters have taken place. The following account was investigated by the late Ark Mason and me. This very strange encounter took place just after 1 a.m. one morning in May of 1971. The witness that we call Mike was returning home after visiting some friends. The driver had just shut off his car radio and had his window rolled down since it was nice outside. We all like to do. Mike had just rounded a bend in the road. When off to his right, he observed a saucer-shaped object hovering about 20 or 25 feet above the ground near a barn. The man was curious about what he was looking at, so he slowed down the car within it was like 75 yards or so of the object and stopped to observe it. The stationary object was about 100 feet, 20 feet in length, 
40 feet high and had what looked like an oversized doorless opening slightly left at the center. The entire object looked solid and dull gray in color and had no marking. There appeared to be some burnt areas along the bottom section of the device, similar to what some of our spacecrafts would look like after re-entry. At the top of this saucer-shaped device was a five-foot dome with a prototuber, proto, pro, protuberance, protuberance at the top that might have been an antenna. Okay. Emitting from that opening was an orange-red glow coming from the interior of the object. The man heard a humming sound. They always hear. You know, you do. You always hear that humming. That, you know. Um, that is a very common, yeah, a uh, humming sound coming from the aircraft, which was as steady as a moderate in, uh, intensity. As Mike studied the object, he noticed a human-like figure that was illuminated from the in, uh, internal lighting from inside the object as it walked from right to left in the opening. Oh. A short time later, a similar figure, possible the same, possibly the same one, moved from left to right across the opening. These occupants looked to be about six feet tall and were dressed in a gray-white metallic-looking garb with a hood or cloak, similar to a hooded, hooded warm-up jersey or something like that. Yeah, it's a hoodie. They walked in a normal manner. These figures never looked toward the witness. Mike also commented that the interior of the object, from what he could see, looked empty as no equipment of any kind was visible. Then the situation took on a stranger aspect. Moments after observing the second figure walking, Mike turned his head about 45 degrees to his left side and noticed over his shoulder a figure standing about three feet from his car. From this position, the driver who was, uh, who was startled could only see the figure from the upper chest area um, to the belt line. Mike recognized that the metallic outfit that the being was wearing looked similar to the aluminum material that the figures were wearing in the hovering saucer-shaped craft. The witness did not observe any uh, extremities, nor were any weapons or other uh, equipment noticed. The suddenly... Suddenly, Mike heard a click. I'm sorry, then. Suddenly, Mike heard a click. Similar to a firing pin falling on an empty chamber of a gun. Seconds later, the man felt a blast that forced him onto the console between the seats of the car. He then heard a loud blast similar to a shotgun. Mike sped up the road and passed the object still hovering nearby. The driver knew he had been shot. He felt his back in his hand and, and found that they were covered with blood. Mike knew he was wounded and drove to a volunteer fire company not far and received assistance. The driver was taken by ambulance to the Uniontown Hospital and he was interviewed uh, by the uh, state police. Mike was treated and examined by a surgeon. He was later told that a pellet in his upper left shoulder could not be removed due to a penetration depth without danger of injuring uh, to some tendons. His car had sustained nearly 100 pelt-sized uh, dents, similar to a shotgun pattern fired from a distance of 25 feet. Ooh, man. The witness, however, stated that he believed he was shot from a distance of only a few feet away. There were also pellet holes in the dash of the car as well. The account is very strange, and the witness appeared credible. I have photos of the damage of the car and examine the location where the encounter took place. There is no doubt that Mike was shot, why he was shot, and by whom or what it was unknown. Could another person have seen the strange object of being that night and shot at them? 
hitting Mike by accident? Well, that, my friend, I don't know. But it sure sounds like it. See, and all this, I mean, man, like I said, it's always incredible, you know. I'll always tell you, man. I will believe anybody before I'm like, no. Well, you know, I mean, it is kind of always like, I guess it depends who's telling me, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm very, actually, I'm very, very open to the, uh, to the first, uh, because, you know, it's, it, you're, you're gonna be really lucky, to be honest with you, if you have all your stuff. Usually this stuff never happens until you're charging your batteries, you have like a camera in your hand or something in your hand, but the batteries are, are like the your film is out or Whoa, Globo, what's up, man? How you doing? Okay. I need to answer. Uh, okay. I'll do that in a minute. Um. Man, I wonder if everybody heard that. All right. I uh, man. Sorry, I'm re I was re reading some. Now. What 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 interests me about the that the uh, really any of the stories, but man, okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. I like that. All right. Apologize. Sorry. No. Um. What what fascinates me about these things is that, man, like I was saying, you, you, these people aren't really right. So it's like you're kind of going off of like, what 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 is that called? Like um, not like quick memory, but and this is where this is where. People are either like, uh, no, I'm not going to say like confused, but people are like, well, no, how, how do you know if this memory wasn't, man, even in the case that you are like uh, trying to remember something, you still, it still happened. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, people might be a little false on their whatevers. Maybe, maybe not, but I mean. I know that when something happens with me and I'm trying to tell, um, it might get a little bit embellished, but not. But for the most part, there's something real fucked up to see. Um, it, I mean, it, something had to spark. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that I never will doubt, doubt like, you know, knock anybody for what, you know, for, for stuff, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I do. I mean, you know. Um, all right. So, uh, I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to play this. So, I will be right back. I'll be right here. If anybody wants to hit me up, I'm doing a live show. So, if anybody wants to hit me up, I'm right here. And, um, yeah, uh, we're just hanging out, man. Totally, totally kicking and having fun today. So, hit me up. If you have any questions, and this is National Park, just outside of Columbia. It's a beautiful boardwalk that winds through the swamps and cypress forest. If you look at the image, the story might make more sense. I used to live in Columbia, South Carolina, and I often visited the Congaree National Park, also known as the CNP. 
So, I know the area fairly well. I would frequently hop on the fence and walk along the boardwalk at night. It was incredibly peaceful to stroll through the swamp and listen to the sounds of wildlife. There was never a ranger or a guard present after hours, so I was always alone. I went for a walk in October of 2021 with a flashlight. There were lots of insects and frogs making noise, but it suddenly stopped when I was about a mile in. I heard what I thought was my wife call me from the trail ahead, but she wasn't there with me. I was alone, and she was out of town. I then heard water sloshing to my right and saw nothing. I chalked it up to being tired and kept on moving. The wildlife started up shortly, and everything seemed to be fine again. Probably about 15 minutes later, I noticed that it got eerily quiet again, and I heard swamp water sloshing to my left one more time. But this time, it was much more deliberate, almost like somebody walking with purpose. I was in a thick portion of the cypress and couldn't see more than 20 feet in front of me at my best. And then I heard my wife's voice again. Again, she wasn't with me. She was out of town, certainly not moving through a swamp at 1 a.m., I saw what looked like a human silhouette move between the trees for a split second, but it was off. Very skinny, pale, and taller than me at six foot. I noped the hell out of there really quickly and ran. Didn't really know what I wanted out of life early on. Over the years, have really learned about what I want to pursue. Purdue Global has helped me with having the flexibility to go to school full time as well as work full time. Start your comeback at purdueglobal.edu and almost the two miles back to my truck and didn't slow down until I heard the wildlife again. Like I said, this is a boardwalk that's in a swamp in the boonies. Nobody is walking around in the dead of night like I am. I'm probably the weirdest person around here. At least, I think so. I feel like I should add that I wasn't high or sleep deprived. I just like going in the woods at night. I was so freaked out by this. I came to the show and had to submit it 100% immediately because I wanted you to hear it. I, I, I'm convinced that I have encountered some sort of crawler or wendigo or something else that can mimic voices. Growing up on a small farm bordering a forest in Tennessee, I experienced numerous unexplainable events. But one series of occurrences remains a mystery to this day. When I was around 12 or 13 years old, I began having reoccurring dreams that took place in a forest, a location I often visited. In these dreams, I would come across a large black wolf with glowing red eyes. Strangely, each time I saw this wolf, there would be a death on the farm within a day or two usually involving a chicken being preyed upon by a predator. During my final dream involving the wolf, a woman's voice accompanied its presence in the forest. I could hear her, but she always remained just out of my line of sight. Though her words are now hazy in my memory, I recall her saying, Do not fear the wolf, among other things. As the wolf circled me, I didn't feel fear, but rather a deep sense of respect for its ancient power. After that last encounter, I never saw the wolf again, but the dreams felt more vivid than reality. Since then, I've wondered about the identity of the wolf and the woman in the forest. These dreams marked the beginning of my fascination with the paranormal, leading to many more inexplicable experiences. I've often wondered if I connected with the forest spirit or a Native American presence during these encounters. So I told my story of what I thought was a dogman encounter on this channel a while back. Well in that video I stated that I had many weird and crazy stories. Since you graciously shared the last one I thought why not share another scary encounter I had. As I said in the last video I lived in Maryland, but before you think of blue crabs and beaches, I'm in a more rural area of the state. My uncle and aunt own a condo however, at a popular beach cut ocean city. In late May of 2018, I decided to take my friend Omar to the condo since no one was using it, and I got permission to take the keys and go. It's about a three-hour drive from my home to Ocean City. 
and since I was a newer good driver and recently got my provisional license, I decided to drive up for a vacation with my best friend. I own an old black 1970 Chevy Nova, but it is fast as a roadrunner and very reliable. I, extremely hyping up with my new car, decided to purchase a roll cage, which would come into play later in the story. I was told it was stupid and costly, but my family eventually admitted how badass my car looked. Plus, very safe. So on May 28th, I drove my Nova to Omar's house about 5 miles away from mine, and we set off. Depending on which way you go to Ocean City, much of the drive is through farmland and small towns near the Potomac River. We were about two hours into the drive, and since it was still midday, we were not pressed for time, seeming how we would be there for about two weeks. As Omar snacked on chips loudly, he asked if we could shuffle some music on his phone. My phone was charging on a portable charger in my hoodie pocket, and the speaker was rolling at my feet. Since it was a vintage car, I didn't remove the old speakers or anything. Just the stuff I needed since, you know, I needed to fit in the roll cage. I said of course because I and Omar share the same taste in rap music. I picked up the speaker and he connected it via Bluetooth with his phone. Now, since I had a loud engine in the car, the speaker was equally loud to balance out the noise. Omar, of course, blasted the speaker to its max, but I wasn't complaining because the song went hard. While I was too busy rapping to the loud lyrics, I failed to notice the deer standing in the center of the street. Omar yelled for me to swerve, which I did, but as my rear bumper clipped the deer, my car flipped into the air, doing a full corkscrew and landed, sliding on its hood for 12 feet or so. We hung there by our seatbelt in shock, not fully comprehending the insanity of what just unfolded. I had busted my nose and scratched my face pretty bad, and Omar banged his forehead on the dash, but besides that... I'm pretty sure we were all ultimately fine. I looked over at Omar as he looked at me, and we just laughed. Partly because we lived, and mostly because... We were in the weird state of nervous shock. It took a minute to compose ourselves, and still strapped in hanging upside down, we began to realize that a damn deer had flipped my car. We somehow got out of my door, crawling painfully through the window, which was shattered all to hell. As Omar stepped out, he met my gaze. I was looking at the same deer standing looking at us as if we had broken a twig. Omar's jaw dropped as did mine. Maybe it's some metal statue some guy left out as a prank or something, Omar said. But as he did, the deer blinked. Thoroughly freaked out, we started back towards the car, making sure not to break eye contact with the thing. As my thigh bumped into the car, the deer stood up on his back legs and let out a scream that made my head hurt. Omar and I began to run, but knowing we had nowhere to run, we stumbled to the front of my car. But the thing was gone. Out of nowhere, it seemingly just vanished. Our hearts pounding, we tried in vain to flip my precious car. Thankfully, the roll cage I'd invested in not only saved our lives, but most of my car as well. Since flipping it wouldn't work, Omar had a good idea. Call Marco. Our friend Leo's uncle had a towing service, also working in insurance. Remembering the pain that it took to get a company to insure a teen driver like me, I quickly dialed Mr. Romani. He picked up instantly and greeted me like a brother. I, I shared him our situation, and where the last gas station I saw was, leaving out the detail of a deer creature and replacing it with a hit-and-run driver. His employees were all off, but he told me he could drive us and pick up the car. He took us to the beach and took the car back. I quickly thanked him and asked him to hurry, thinking the beast might still be close. He hung up and we sat back to back on the side of the road. We waited, and it felt like we waited for a very long time. But it only luckily took him about an hour to get to us, because he lived closer to Ocean City than we did. He flipped the car using his truck and tools, and then loaded it on his truck. We hopped in and thanked him. He told me and Omar the car would be fine in his hands, 
and if we saw the car on the road that flipped us, to point it out. I and Omar glanced at one another, and I said I would. The rest of the trip was uneventful. We spent our two weeks on the beach and boardwalk, and on our second to last day I got a call from Marco saying all was in order, and the car was ready to be dropped off at the condo tomorrow. I told Omar the news, and we all breathed a sigh of relief. As the amazing person he was, the work it took to repair my car was cost-free. I thanked him and we hung up. On the drive back, I made sure to take a different route home, while Omar looked up possible explanations of what could have happened. We were so caught up in the joys of vacation that we had barely mentioned it to each other. He found stories of things called skimwalkers, which would manifest and take the shape of creatures. I drove my car much more carefully on the way back and got us home safely. Although for about two weeks after that, there was always a tapping noise on my window. I could have sworn that I heard a voice that sounded like a bad imitation of Omar's voice, whispering as a lure to get me outside. I knew whatever was outside was not my best friend. Some backstory. This was two days ago. My family owns about 80 acres of land, and we lease it to my grandfather for his cattle since he has so many. He has about three farms that he owns personally, but he needed more space to put his other 20 head of cattle. Now, I'm getting to my story. My grandfather called me at around 8.56 at night, saying that he had lost track of one of the newborn calves and he needed my help. We meet at the old bunkhouse on our property. He said we should split up and search the land, and we took off with our four-wheelers. I drove around the upper, more forested area of the place. I came around, and the sun had finally set. It was dark now, so I turned on my lights and drove through the trees. I kept searching for the calf, but I couldn't find it. I stopped my four-wheeler, and it was quiet. I pulled out my flashlight and decided to look on foot for a minute. I walked a little bit away from my 4x4, and I heard some light rustling. It was so quiet that I didn't know if I actually heard it or not. I slowly turned my head in the direction, and slowly shined my light there, and there it was, the calf. But it was in the lap of, well, something. I can only describe what it looked like, because I have no words to name this thing. It was sitting there with the calf in its lap. It had one hand on its back, and one in its stomach. Its eyes were huge, and it had no pupils. Its head was a skeleton shape, but it was, like, wrapped in tight skin. You could see the skull inside of its head. Its nose was two holes below where they should be. It looked like it didn't even have a mouth. Just smooth skin. But there was blood covering the spot where our mouth should have been. We sat there staring at each other for at least five minutes. Then, that's when it started opening its mouth. Slowly, and its head rolled back. It opened its mouth wide and bent down to its neck. Its teeth were filed, and they all curved back towards the throat. It didn't have a tongue, and you could see down its throat. It didn't scream or yell or anything, really. It just quietly kind of screeched, and then slowly came back to the state that it was before. I forgot to mention that it was as tall as me sitting. It pulled its hand out of the calf and started standing slowly. I forgot to mention its hands weren't exactly big, but they were long. Its fingers didn't have fingernails, but instead the fingers were sharp points. When it finally stood all the way up, it was an estimated ten feet tall and I was about a solid six foot. It took a f step forward, and uh, I finally snapped out of it. I turned and sprinted to the 4x4. Four four. As I ran, I looked back, and it was following me. But it seemed like it was saying something to me, like it wanted me to stop. And as I thought that, it took two strides, and it was only five feet away from me. I hopped on the 4x4 four four and was trying to get it to start. I looked back, and it was looking down at me, its sharp claws were coming towards me slowly, as if it were trying to console me while I grieved at a funeral. I started it and took off, and while I was driving over the roar of the engine, 
I heard quick footsteps behind me. I left the tree line, and I rode down the hill, and stopped and looked up. It was there, looking at me, still the same abstract look on its face. It just walked back into the woods. The day after I came back to that spot I saw the day before, there was a trail of blood that led to a field in the back of the property, and all that was left of the calf was some bones with a little meat in the pile. Right next to it was its skin. I was going to bury it, but I had forgotten to bring a shovel. I left and went to get one, but when I came back, the pelt was hanging from the wall in the bunkhouse. I looked upon the hill, and it was watching me. Last night, when it was really quiet, and I was close to being asleep, I heard some twigs snapping outside my house. I looked out the window from the blinds, and I saw a pair of white eyes staring back at me. Thanks for listening to these creepy and downright strange cryptid encounter horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to slap that like button silly as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new faces, and that helps the swamp grow its ever-expanding waters. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's an encounter with some sort of skinwalker, a dogman, a Bigfoot, or anything in between, be sure to submit your story at SwampDweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Swamp the way you do. I couldn't do this without you guys. Be sure to go join me over on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, Instagram for some fun memes and updates, and all the other fun social medias out there. I'm always posting and sharing stuff on those websites. I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode. They say if it's too good to be true, it must be. But at WGU, you can get your degree with the same accreditations as the large universities. See why over 95% of employers say they would hire another WGU grad. And learn more at WGU.edu. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. One of my favorite things to do is read folklore stories in my free time. It's not often that I read them on the channel, but I think it's time that we compile some of these. So, today, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite folklore stories. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. And stories like yours that help keep this show going. Joining me today is my good friend Vitus22. He's a very long time friend, pretty much from the start of the swamp. He's a great narrator, and I think you guys will enjoy his voice. And if you do, I would really, really appreciate it if you would check out the link in the top of the description and subscribe to his channel. He is very close to 10,000 subscribers, and it would be super awesome if you guys would help him out with that. I do feel that he might be the most underrated narrator on the platform, but that's just my opinion. Anyways, I appreciate all your well wishes recently. I am feeling a lot better. My thumb is still broken, but feels much better than it did if, about a week ago. But uh, I really do appreciate all the kind messages. Thank you guys. Now, let's get into these creepy and downright strange stories that'll keep you up tonight.
So, I started volunteering at a wildlife refuge recently, and one of the resident animals is awfully weird. So, like I said, I started volunteering there about a month ago. I go in on Sundays and Saturdays for a five-hour shift and basically just feed the animals, change their water, give medication to the ones who need it, and then discuss miscellaneous work. This is a wildlife refuge, though. So the end goal is to return as many of the animals as we can that are delivered to us by animal control back to the wild as possible. So some animals, for one reason or another, unfortunately can't go back to the wild because of injuries, imprinting, or what have you. These are our resident animals, who are permanent stays at the refuge. On my first day, the lady who runs the place gave me a tour. It's not a big place, maybe the size of a small park, with maybe two or three dozen animals, of all species and all sizes, at any given time. She showed me where the raccoons are, where the possums are, where the squirrels are. There's even a one-eyed coyote there as a resident, amongst all things. But then, at the end of the showing, she brought me towards a relatively large building. It was wooden, but about the size of two cargo containers side by side, with a pretty hefty padlock and some bolts on the entrance, and what looked like a reinforced beam and walls all around. Most of the buildings that housed the refuge animals were in mild disrepair, only as well maintained as they needed to be. But this one looked like someone was taking care of it and repairing it on a weekly basis, if not more frequent. The lady explained to me that this is where they kept the resident deer, Bambi. She had lapsed the name, but then I remembered from reading of the handbook that wildlife refuges aren't even supposed to even have deer, let alone make them a resident, since they're so high maintenance and such a hassle to deal with. I asked her why we have Bambi then, and she explained. Yes, well, Bambi's sort of a, a special case. It's a bit complicated as to why, but all you need to know is that you don't have to feed her or anything. I do that myself, since she's a bit much to handle at times. Right as she finished her explanation, there was a loud bang from the enclosure that Bambi was housed in that both looked like and felt like that it had shook the foundations of the place. For a moment, I worried that the walls would collapse and an angry deer would come rushing out. But that, thankfully, didn't happen. Ah, seemed like she's energetic today. I might need some sedatives when I go in. It wasn't strange for the refuge to use sedatives. They were dealing with wild animals, after all. But my mind was immediately struck with the image of this slightly tubby, middle-aged lady taking down a deer with a tranquilizer rifle, which I laughed about a little to myself. I put my concerns about this deer out of my mind, though, and just focused on getting trained for the job. Whenever I was near Bambi's building, though, I would sometimes hear what I would assume, based on my naive experience from watching too many nature shows, was a deer call. But it was deeper, almost grumbling, much like a large predator animal would make. Plenty of the animals in the refuge made noises, some almost constantly, but the sounds Bambi's were making were quite unsettling compared to what the other animals sounded like. Again, though, I tried not to worry about it, and my first few days working at the wildlife refuge went fine. Sunday before last, though, I saw something that started to make me a bit more concerned about what was going on with Bambi. The lady who ran the place had explicitly told me that she fed Bambi after we closed up shop around 6 p.m. because the deer were nocturnal and night eaters. I knew that nocturnal deer existed, so this wasn't too worrisome for me. What was worrisome was that what I saw when I was sitting out in my car after my shift was over, texting a friend about my dinner plan. It looked like the manager was making her way over to feed Bambi, and she was carrying two things with her as she approached the enclosure. 
the first was a tranquilizer rifle, at which point I had small, nervous chuckle at my previous idea actually ending up being true. And the second thing was a bag full of something that looked deep red and full of liquid. What I saw in the bag was unmistakable, even from the distance I was at. It was a bag full of raw, bloody meat, enough to feed a group of 20 people at a steakhouse with two servings each, if not more. Now, I knew that some deer have been shown to eat meat under specific circumstances, so the concept of Bambi having some steak for dinner wasn't that concern to me. Instead, it was the sheer amount of raw flesh that was being brought in by the manager and the fact that it seemed to be only food that she was bringing in. I know that the deer can eat meat, but I'm fairly certain that there's no species of deer that eats only meat. They can be omnivorous, but I've never heard of a purely carnivorous deer. Worried that the manager might get mad if she knew I was watching, I ducked under the dashboard and waited for her to go in, and quickly drove off for dinner with my friends, putting the image of that bag full of raw meat from my mind, as I coincidentally enough had some hamburgers to eat. Now, that could have easily been the end of it, and I had just minded my own business afterwards. But, as any good, no sleeper, my curiosity is too far to be suppressed by common sense. Between the noises that no deer should make, the regular shaking and crashing coming from inside the Bambi's enclosure, and now knowing what deer's daily dinner consisted of, I had to go look. I just had to. I had been entrusted with the keys to the animal's cages and enclosures on my second week, and I quickly realized that there was one key on the ring I didn't use for anything on my daily routine. I figured that it must be to some place that wasn't being used, or maybe that had been decommissioned, or something like that, and I didn't overthink it at the time. This past Sunday, though, I had an idea, one that turned out to be right. I don't know why the manager would keep a key to Bambi's enclosure on the ring that all of her volunteers use, but I wasn't about to question her oversight. I had made my way to the building, once I was sure the manager would be busy for a while with some of her office work, and slowly and steadily approached the entrance. I was used to Bambi's banging up against the walls whenever anyone got close, but it still startled me every time it happened. Now, more than ever, more importantly, I hoped that all the noise the deer was making wasn't alerting the manager as to what I was trying to do. Eventually, after what felt like minutes of tiptoeing to the door, I managed to reach the padlock and tried the key. It went in on the first try, which somehow didn't come as a surprise to me. A few bolts later, and I managed to open the front door and opened into an airlock of Bambi's enclosure. All of the other enclosures have a similar system to keep them from getting out whenever we go in to feed or clean them, so this wasn't surprising. What was surprising? was just how secure the inner door of the airlock was. If the outer door felt like a bank vault, then the inner door felt like Fort Knox. There must have been four or five different locks, all of which used the same key, thankfully, and at least half a dozen different bolts. The door itself was heavily reinforced and felt like, from pushing on it, like it must have weighed quite a bit. Of course, all of these precautions made sense given the strength of Bambi, which I regularly noticed shook the building and was desperately trying to contain her. Right as I had that thought, another such banging came from just inside, along the wall. Thankfully, not on the door. Which I felt... Everybody, thank you much. Well, everybody, that was my friend at the swamp. Oh man, if you haven't checked that out, great, 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 uh, great, great, great story, man. I love it, dude. All right, man, you guys, 
Everybody have a wonderful day. Uh, man, I, I had a blast again, as always. Uh, Lincoln, I want to say, hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. Those were not real pictures of me sleeping, I swear to God. That was my dad. I don't do that when I'm in the middle. Of, I'm working, man. I'm working. Hey, you guys, have a wonderful day. I appreciate you as always. Man, thank you guys. You have a wonderful day. And man, thank you. And note to Bill, no man mystery podcast.